Port Diltz was a temporary sod fort built in September 1864 by a wagon train of miners and their families headed for the gold fields of what would become Montana to defend themselves from a relentless attack by Sioux Indians. I visited the site in August 2017. The historic site is located in the extreme southwestern corner of North Dakota near the small town of Bowman. It is several miles off Highway 12 on a little traveled gravel road. This is the 8.3 acre site looking south. As you can see it is located in the proverbial middle of nowhere. The site is still relatively undisturbed and there's not much there. A trash can, a registration book in that mailbox, barbed wire fencing, a stone monument, a flagpole, some headstones, and on the north side of the road some interpretive signs. The wagon train of about 100 wagons left Fort Ridgely in Minnesota on July 15, 1864. It was led by Captain James Fisk and contained about 170 men, women, and children. Because of the ongoing war with the Sioux, the wagon train picked up a military escort at Fort Rice, 180 miles to the east of the historic site. The escort consisted of a mixed force of 50 cavalry and mounted infantry picked from soldiers convalescing at the fort. On September 2nd, the Sioux pounced on two straggling wagons at Deep Creek, killing most of the men guarding the wagons. For two more days, the Sioux harassed the wagon trains that struggled westward another 12 miles. Finally, on September 4th, the wagon train halted and erected a sod fortification six and a half feet high and 300 feet in diameter. That night, an army lieutenant with 15 men snuck out of the fort and headed back for Fort Rice for help. A rescue force of over 800 soldiers arrived at the besieged fort on September 20th. The Sioux left and the wagon train returned to Fort Rice and disbanded. Note in this view, five headstones erected for five soldiers who died back at Deep Creek. You can spot the historic monument on the horizon next to the flagpole. The headstones were erected here, but the soldiers were buried back by the river. Ernest Hoffenaster, Company A, Brackets, Minnesota Cavalry. Augustine Carpenter, Company G, 8th Minnesota Infantry. Joseph Delaney, Company I, 8th Minnesota Infantry. Theodore Rosh, Company K, 8th Minnesota Infantry. William H. Chase, Company D, Brackets, Minnesota Cavalry. Here I walked up to the monument. You can see in this view how isolated the site still is. Here's the monument. The stones look like petrified wood to me. Here's a close-up of the plaque on the monument. The sketch is an artist's rendition of the fort from a detailed description left by one of the immigrants on the wagon train. I don't think the drawing is quite to scale. You can also see in this view three more headstones. These were for three soldiers who had been mortally wounded and died at the fort. They were actually buried in the entrenchments. Several civilians were also killed. Corporal Jefferson Diltz, Company C, 1st Minnesota Cavalry. The sod fort was named after him. Thomas C. Williamson, Company A, 8th Iowa Cavalry, and Marma D. Betts, Company F, 8th Iowa Cavalry. This view is from the southern end of the fort's perimeter. There is a bit of a crown to the topography, so Fisk probably thought this was about the best high ground he could find to establish a temporary fort. Also note again the empty bleakness of the setting. This is open prairie country. The silver car parked on the road is mine. The red car belonged to another fellow who stopped at the site while I was there. I was surprised to see anyone else. He stayed only briefly. Here's a remnant of the eroded sod wall. You can see similar remains at other points on the perimeter. There were many information stations around the perimeter, but the information posters had been removed from the posts. This view looks north from just behind the historic monument. You can see the interpretive signs in the distance on the north side of the road. Here are the interpretive signs. I also photographed each of them separately. You can read them in their entirety by pausing the video. In Bowman, you will find the very nice Pioneer Trails Regional Museum. The cutout on the front page of the brochure represents a dinosaur footprint. North Dakota, 
Along with Montana and the Dakotas, is a rich source of dinosaur fossils. But the museum covers many subjects. And the museum has an exhibit on Fort Diltz. That includes a mock-up of part of a sod wall as would have been used in Fort Diltz. The exhibit has a lengthy discussion of the, of the battle, including pictures of some of the people involved. Here again is the artist's rendition of what the fort looked like. And this is the detailed information recorded by one of the members of the wagon train, William L. Larnett. The Fort Dilt site became a state historic site in 1932 and it is listed on the National Register of Historic Places.